Welcome to lecture 13. We are focused on chapter 4 in our textbook. Um, our learning objectives will be to, um, we're going to look at a, a new reaction and a reaction mechanism. And that reaction mechanism is called free radical halogenation of alkanes. And we will look at um, reaction energy diagrams that are used to describe a reaction mechanism. You'll need to be able to label these reaction energy diagrams. We'll have to assign um, bond dissociation energies. You'll see that abbreviated as BDE, bond dissociation energies, and you'll need those numbers on page 203 in your textbook. And you also have a slide in your um, blackboard with those bond dissociation energies. We will also look at um, uh, the selectivity of reactions of halogenation reactions and Hammett's postulate. You have two Pogel exercises on this. Um, well, let's just also put in there is reactive intermediates. We'll talk about those. And the reactive intermediates is in your Pogel 6A. And you'll also see reaction energy diagrams. We'll be describing that in Pogel 6A. And then your reaction mechanism for free radical halogenation selectivity is in your Pogel 6B. So I will introduce these concepts here, and then we'll go and learn more about these particular topics by working through our Pogel activities. Um, I want to say, if you're planning on taking Organic 2, and I assume you are if you're in Organic 1, that you're going to be learning about 180 reactions, and you'll have to know them all by the time you take your final for Organic 2, okay? And um, that's why it's very important that you learn how to draw those Lewis structures so that Pogel 1 activity and Pogel 2 where we talked about resonance structures and get used to those first two um, rows of the periodic table, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, halogen. You need to get used to these because these are the molecules you're going to see and you're going to be drawing these. Um, but what I do in my classes is I um, print out these sheets for students. And I tell you what, I will post them. Uh, I call them reaction sheets. And I will post them on your um, Blackboard. And they're just, uh, they're just a way to organize the reactions, like I said, because you have 180. And right now, you, you should have already, so when I put these on there, I would create a binder. And I would keep these reactions for your reaction sheets. And you'll want to name and you'll want to describe the reaction. And your first reaction um, is acid-based chemistry. And you had a Pogel exercise where you had to label the acid, the base, uh, the conjugate acid, the conjugate base, the pKa of your acid, the pKa of your conjugate acid. You did your electron flow arrows. Um, and so it's how you describe the mechanism. And when you draw electron flow arrows, you are describing mechanisms. So that's your first reaction. And you use the equilibrium arrows. Well, you are going to do a second one at this point. Um, and it's called the free radical halogenation reaction and that's the name and we'll talk about the mechanism and you'll want to get this into your reaction sheets that I'll post so you can print those out. All right, um, let's just go ahead and start 
um, with the reaction. So I will just give you an example of a reaction. We'll start there and then we'll work through the Pogel. So halogenation, what are your halogens? Look at your periodic table. Fluorine. I'm looking for my periodic table as well. Um, here it is. Okay. Um, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodide. And when we do free radical halogenation of alkanes, we're talking about an sp3 carbon. Okay, what's an alkane? You've learned, what's the name of this? One, two, three, four. Butane. What is the hybridization of each one of these carbons? sp3. So you know carbon likes four bonds. So if this carbon is bonded to two carbons in the chain, it has two hydrogens. So this one is three. What's the molecular formula? C4, H10. Okay. So these are alkanes. And if we do free radical halogenation, we are putting either chlorine or bromine on one of these carbons. And you're going to learn about selectivity. And I'm going to tell you, we're not talking about fluorine. And I'll tell you why. It's, it's just very explosive. Okay, I'll just go ahead and tell you. It's very explosive. So we don't do free radical halogenation reactions with fluorine. Iodide, too slow. Okay, so we don't do this reaction with iodide. So we do this with chlorine, and we're going to use chlorine. You know, it's a diatomic. Here's the Lewis structure of chlorine, Cl2. And we do this with also bromine. And you will find, well, I'll just tell you, that when you work in the laboratory, you really just do, if you're going to do this reaction, you would do it with, with bromine. Um, I don't think you would touch it with chlorine you, because this is a selective reaction. What do I mean by selective? It can um, react in a high yield exclusively on a particular carbon. Okay. You can think of chlorine as kind of promiscuous. Okay. So if you have butane, that chlorine will go on every one of those carbons. Okay. Um, and then what? You get yields like, uh, see, so what could you get? It goes here. You only get one chlorine there. Or you get a chlorine here. One, two, three, four. Okay. That's only, that would be two products. Do you understand why? If you put it, so you put it here. Okay, that's that one. You put it there. Do you understand that that would be the same thing as if you put a chlorine here or if you put a chlorine there? So you get two products. So then you have to you have to figure out your yield. You probably get this would probably be about 33%, this would be about 66%. Okay, and we're going to learn why that's the case. But right now, just kind of getting you started, selective reaction here with bromine, you would get probably about 95% all on this carbon here. And it's because this carbon is a secondary carbon. What's a secondary carbon? That is a carbon attached to two carbons. So that carbon is connected to one, two carbons. That's a secondary carbon. Okay. Um, this carbon here, okay, is what? That carbon there. It's a carbon bonded to one carbon. It's a primary carbon. 
okay? So you'll find that secondary carbons are more selective um, because we're going to tear, we're going to take that hydrogen away, okay? And we're going to replace it with either a chlorine or a bromine. And this is where the bond association energies come in, which I told you was on page 203. So let's go to page 203 in your textbook or print that off. On you. I thought we were in class. I'd, I would ha hand that out today. Page 203. It's um, in your, your slides. Okay, so you'll see that you have on this um, bond association energy these enthalpies, bond association enthalpy, kilojoules per mole. And you'll see bonds to secondary carbons. It's on the top right-hand sheet, on the very top. You see it's 413, okay? Bonds to secondary carbons. So where's my secondary carbon? I said this was a secondary. So that costs 413 kilojoules per mole to remove that hydrogen. What about the primary? So I come in the first column on the very bottom, and I see that's 423. So 423 kilojoules per mole to remove a primary hydrogen. So you're looking at about 10 kilojoules per mole difference, and that's where you um, determine your selectivity. Okay, that's selectivity. So we'll talk about that, and we'll also talk about reaction energy diagrams. Okay, so this is just an overview before we start working Pogel. Um, so let's look at our first reaction, like I promised you. Example. And I'm going to give you, let's, let's keep with butane. Okay, so let's keep with butane. Okay, so butane, and we're going to add chlorine. So you would get something like this, and you have to have H nu, which is light, okay? And if you read in your book, it talks about the importance of the light, or you could have heat. And sometimes you'll see heat like this. So these, the chlorine-chlorine or the bromine-bromine bonds um, are pretty easy to break. Let's see if we have those bond association energies. Chlorine-chlorine, 240. So to break the chlorine-chlorine bond, it costs, I'm looking at that sheet, 240 kilojoules per mole. Okay? And so... Blue light can actually do this. It has the right wavelength with the right energy, okay? And what it does, it does a homolytic cleavage, okay? Homolytic. So we're going to learn the difference between homolytic and heterolytic in your Model 1 of your Pogel activity. Basically, there's two electrons in this covalent bond. One electron is going to go with that chlorine, and the other one's going to go with that chlorine. Do you see these fish hook arrows? This is the first time you've seen these. You've seen me draw the double headed arrow. Well, the double header arrow is um, a heterolytic cleavage. And you saw that with the acid base reaction. So when we did something like um, acetic acid, which is the active ingredient in vinegar, and you react this with sodium hydroxide. Okay, you saw where this base went and took the acidic proton, right? And you see that these two electrons are going from, the light, this is what these arrows mean, these electron flow arrows, from the hydroxide to the hydrogen. And it's going to take that, and then these electrons with hydrogen have to go on the oxygen. And then we draw that result because you're just telling a story here. And so these two electrons here stay with oxygen, and now oxygen has a negative charge, formal charge, and now this hydrogen here, the acidic proton, goes 
with, and we'll just do these as green, that's that new bond there with the hydroxide. Okay. And then this was your acid, pKa4. And this is your conjugate acid, pKa water, which is what, 15.7. So the equilibrium goes to the um, more, the weaker acid. This is your weaker acid because it's the higher pK value. And you could say that's 16 minus 4. That's like 12, which is 12 zeros. So it allows, lies 12 zeros to the forward reaction. Okay, so you see these double-headed arrows? This is called heterolytic cleavage. And you get um, minuses and pluses. You get charged species. Okay, homolytic cleavage, each um, atom gets to share in those electrons. Okay, and you get neutral species. So when this does a homolytic cleavage, you get two chlorines and you can do the formal charge, but you'll see that it's neutral. And so if you don't have H nu or heat, this reaction is going to sit there all day long. So we're going to draw this reaction mechanism right now. Okay, so we've got to figure out what the products are. Now, so this, this is called initiation. So the first thing you do is initiation. And then the next thing, it's going to be propagation. Okay, so well, let's go to another one here. I'll redraw this for you. Butane plus chlorine, H nu or heat. We have initiation. Sometimes people put I, initiation. But you have your chlorine. You draw your lone pairs. You show homolytic cleavage. And there's two of these. Okay. Now, the second thing that happens, we're just telling the story, folks. Propagation. Okay. So you have a propagation one. And in propagation one, you have to have a um, neutral molecule plus a free radical in the uh, reactants. And on the products, you always have to have the neutral um, molecule plus a free radical. Okay, that's, that's the requirement for propagation. So here you look at your reaction and you're like, okay, here's my starting alkane, butane, and now here's the chlorine radical. And here's where you would draw in your hydrogen. So let's just put it on a secondary carbon. That's our secondary carbon. Okay, and there's, and so what's going to happen now is this one electron is going to go and it wants to take away that hydrogen. And now we know we need two bonds. So one of these electrons in this bond is going to go with a hydrogen. And that's going to make, on the product side, HCl. So Cl brings its electrons here. It also has this electron in that bond. And then we'll put two electrons here, this electron there. Okay, so that's HCl. And then this other electron in this bond is going to go, see my fish hook arrow, points where it goes to the carbon. So then you can say, okay, here's our neutral molecule. That's going to be HCl. And our free radical now is going to be this right here. And you can draw in your other hydrogen here if you want. Okay, so that's your free radical. That's propagation step one. Okay, that's still not our end products here that we're going to draw. Then we have to have a propagation step two. So here we have to have the free radical. It's going to be the one that we just generated. And we, can, we don't have to draw our hydrogen in there. We can just draw it like that. So we have a free radical. And then the neutral molecule now will have to be the chlorine. So you see how um, we'll do this. 
So propagation step one, we use the first one, the alkane. In propagation step two, we chose the second reagent, chlorine. Now what happens is this free radical, this is very reactive, okay? It's a reactive intermediate, does not want to stay as a free radical. It's going to go with this one electron, and it wants to bond with chlorine. And then you have two electrons here. One's going to go with the chlorine. The other one's going to go with the other chlorine. And then you draw your products here. So we draw this with the chlorine plus the chlorine radical. And you can draw these in. Here's your green electrons. We'll put this as red so you can see what's happening here. And then one of these comes from the chlorine, the other one from the radical. Okay, so that's our propagation step. Usually there's two. Um, so here's the neutral product, and this is the neutral product. So in your product, you would just write the product is HCl plus chlorine. Um, well, what is this? 2-chlorobutane. But now with chlorine, chlorine is not selective, so you would also get this molecule too. And you'll have a lot of sapling that show you that. So you would get both of these products. Now, what's happening in that reaction flask? Okay, so this is, and I don't know if you remember Hess's law um, from general chemistry, but you, you add up everything, okay? So we add up all these reactions, okay? So, and it's just propagation. So in Hess's law, you focus on the propagation steps. And so if you, you have to add this up, you come down here and you'd say, okay, this plus this gives you this, okay, and then um, plus chlorine. You see how this is on the reactant side and this chlorine is also on the product side, so they cancel out, okay. And then uh, what else do we have here? We have um, HCl, and we have this product here. And then once again, on here, this radical and this radical would cancel out. Okay, so what do you have left? You have this one, butane, you have chlorine, and then you have HCl as your products, and you have two chloro butane. And this is Hess's law for the propagation steps. Because the initiation, it's really small, small amount that starts it up. Now how does the termination step happen? Well, you can pick any, um, any free radical that might be generated. So this could be um, a chlorine free radical with this free radical, okay, and then what does that make? Okay, you see how no new free radical is generated? And when that happens, that's a termination step. Um, could you have this? What if they bump into each other? Okay, so yes, that would terminate. So there's several termination steps there. Okay, now when you're doing bond dissociation energies, you're doing this for the propagation steps. So once you figure out your reaction mechanism, which is exactly what we just did, correct? Then you need to figure out the bonds broken and then bonds made. And you just do this for the propagation step. So what bonds are broken? 
um, and this is a, that carbon's bonded to two carbons. A secondary carbon, hydrogen, is broken here. And it's always, bonds broken, it's always going to be on the reactant side, folks. Okay, bonds formed, it's going to be on the product side. So then you come over here, what bond is formed? The HCl bond. Come down here to propagation step two. What bond is broken? Do you see it's a chlorine-chlorine? And what bond is formed? It's a secondary carbon Cl. Now, when you do, when you calculate bond dissociation energies, so we're looking um, at your gra at your textbook. We're going to try to decide: Is this reaction um, exothermic or endothermic? Do you remember this from Gen Chem? So an exothermic reaction gives you a what? A negative delta H of enthalpy. Endothermic is a positive delta H of enthalpy. And so bond dissociation energies will allow you to calculate the enthalpy of a reaction. Okay? So bond dissociation energies, they're for homolytic cleavage only. You don't do this for a heterolytic reaction. So this is homolytic because the reaction mechanism is that way. You can see on page 202, it shows how to calculate it. Now, so I do the bonds, um, so B, I have like a little mech, uh, little mm, mnemonic, right? We, what was it, BFF? Um, so you have to do the delta H equals um, uh, let's see, bonds broken and from bonds formed. Okay, so yeah, so you see on there you have delta H equals the sum of the BDE of broken bonds, okay, broken minus the sum of the BDE of bonds formed. So bonds broken minus formed, okay? So it's um, broken minus formed. And the reason why you have to do this is because all your BDE values are given to you in positive values, okay? But energy is released when bonds are formed, okay? And so released means um, it's given off energy. That's negative. But when bonds are, so it costs energy when um, bonds are broken. So those are positive values. Okay. So bonds um, so then you add these up. So let's look at our um, secondary CH. What did you all find? 413? 413 um, CL, that is, is the very beginning, DC 240, okay, and then you come over to HCL, what's that? Um, 432, and then carbon, secondary carbon chlorine is 356. So then you add all these up, all right, so 456, Four, five, three. And then here we have six, seven, eight, five, six, seven, eight, and seven. So bonds broken. Bonds broken. Six fifty three minus bonds formed. Seven eighty eight. So that equals delta H equals a negative. one hundred and thirty five kilojoules per mole so yes this is exothermic 
So you're going to be expected to draw the um, reaction mechanism. That will be worth open response on your um, exam quiz. And then you'll have to assign the um, bond dissociation energies for the propagation steps and decide whether it's an exothermic or endothermic reaction. The other thing I expect you to be able to do is to assign uh, an energy, reaction energy diagram. So let's just go ahead and do that for this reaction. So let's write that reaction again. Overall, notice this is irreversible arrows. I gave a lot of people a lot of feedback telling you to make sure that um, you have equilibrium arrows for acid base, but this is an irreversible error. It means you don't get to go back. Okay, it goes one way. Um, all right, so in a reaction energy diagram, on the y-axis, you have energy. Well, you can look in your book. You see a lot of these. I want you to be able to label this. And then on the x-axis, you have reaction coordinate. Notice how I do my abbreviation for reaction coordinate. Okay, so you're going to have starting material, and it's going to have a certain energy associated with it. Okay, so that's the butane, and it has a certain kind of energy. And then it has to go up. Okay, remember propagation step one. Um, you're basically generating... the free radical, okay, um, okay, so that has a valley. This you're going to find is an intermediate. Free radicals are intermediates. Both intermediates have a valley. They're in the valley, okay, so this would be your free radical. Now, you would also have um, Let's see, so what did we say that cost to take that secondary? I look at the bond association energy. Turning back, the secondary cost uh, 413, 413 kilojoules per mole. Okay, what about the primary to make this compound? The primary costs 423, so go up here to 423 kilojoules per mole. And that would have been something like a little bit higher. Okay. And so that would be this one. All right. So those are your valleys. It still doesn't get us to our product. Okay. So then um, that's propagation step one. Propagation step two would be this one here. So now we got to go to this. And we have to go through another kind of hill to come over, right? And then did we say it was exothermic? Yeah, so that means, what did we, what did we say that was? Um, I didn't write it down. I don't have it. I want to say 135 kilojoules per mole. That was negative. Okay. Um, so what is that? That's the difference between the starting material and the product. So that's the 135 kilojoules per mole. When I say label, that's your delta H, folks. That's your enthalpy, okay? And that's always the difference. And you're going to have to label these, the difference here. Um, your other one here, we didn't actually compute it. But it might be something like that. Okay, so you could actually compute that. Now, another thing you want to be concerned with is the energy difference between here to this height, the tallest peak. Okay, this or in this reaction here, this is called your activation energy. AE, okay? The activation energy is the amount of energy that has to be overcome in order to get the reaction going. Your highest point, so 
in this reaction mechanism, so these are your intermediates. Okay, here's the valley. This is energy here, okay? But the highest point, this is the transition state. We can't bottle, we don't know what that looks like. We can only speculate, okay? The valley we do know. We know that's the intermediates in the reaction mechanism. That's in a valley, okay? But this point at the very tip top, we don't know. That's a transition state. We can only speculate. But it, we have to overcome that. The highest point becomes your rate limiting step. And sometimes you'll see that RLS, RDS, rate determining step. And that is the rate limiting step for the reaction. So they have to overcome that energy. So this is not, the second little lump is a little bit lower and that's not that hard to overcome. And if your products are lower than your starting material, that lets you know on this graph, this is an exothermic reaction. Okay. So that's the gist of bond dissociation energies, um, how to draw a reaction mechanism, and label a reaction energy diagram. Um, at this point, we will go on. Um, I'll make two separate lectures for our Pogel exercises. So that's basically chapter four and what we'll be talking about and the expectations.